data warehouse architecture on Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform. We will begin with understanding the logical architecture. So there's going to be a data source, a staging area, warehouse and reporting. Our data sources could be databases like RDBMS, uh, FTP server and so on. Staging area is where we ingest data from our data sources. Therefore, we must provision for extracting and loading data from our data sources into the staging area. We do not process or transform the data in any fashion in the staging area. It has raw data. So why do we need a staging area? We need a place to keep all the incoming data from our data sources and process it from there. We cannot go back to our data sources every time to process the data. Therefore, we need a staging area. It also helps us to create all the history of the incoming data. Warehouse. This is where we keep cleaned and organized data. Data is extracted from staging area, processed appropriately and loaded into the warehouse. Reporting and business intelligence tools would fetch the data from warehouse for analytics. So this is how our high level data warehouse architecture looks like. Now let us see how this data warehouse would be implemented in Amazon Web Services. Here's our source, a MySQL RDBMS, a Postgres RDBMS, an FTP server with CSV files. Staging area, this has MySQL and Postgres RDS instances and an S3 bucket to store any raw files. The easiest way to extract and load data from source databases into staging databases is to replicate the databases. This is a matter of configuration. To extract files from FTP server and load them into S3 bucket, we use a AWS Lambda function which executes at regular intervals to do its job. As you can see, the staging area contains raw unprocessed data. Warehouse, we use Redshift as our warehouse database and an S3 bucket to hold processed files. Redshift is a highly scalable database and very suitable for data warehousing functions. Now let's look at how we extract, transform and load data from staging to the warehouse. In order to process the files in S3 raw bucket and load them into S3 process bucket, you need an ETL job. You can write an AWS glue job to achieve this. As a part of this job, you might be cleaning and reorganizing the files. In order to load data from staging RDS into Redshift, we can use federated queries. So what is a federated query? It's a query which can extract information from external databases. You write and execute it in Redshift and it can fetch data from other databases. You can also use federated query to load data from S3 bucket into Redshift. These queries will be select statements. This simplifies the job of loading data into Redshift. Of course, all the loaded data is stored in tables. The exact structure and nature of these tables depends on your use case. You could even organize this data in separate schemas. In addition, it is recommended that you also have views. These views would act as an interface for any external tool that wants to query Redshift. This way, your internal table structures are not exposed to the outside world. This allows you to change your table structures and design without impacting any external tools querying Redshift. The views can even be materialized views, which essentially cache data and can be refreshed on demand. For reporting, we can use Amazon QuickSight or any other suitable reporting tool. We can also provide an interface to business analysts for ad hoc queries. Machine learning tools can query Redshift or get data from S3 bucket. 
So this is the overall architecture of our data warehouse on AWS. Time to see the same data warehouse architecture implemented in Google Cloud Platform. This is the same architecture implemented in Google Cloud Platform. Let's go over individual components one by one. In the staging area, RDS is replaced with Cloud SQL. The S3 bucket is a cloud storage bucket. Instead of AWS Lambda, we have a cloud function to fetch the CSV files. In warehouse, you can see Redshift is replaced with BigQuery. This again uses federated queries to extract information from external databases as well as cloud storage. The reporting tool is Data Studio and we will continue to have an interface for ad hoc query. For machine learning, we can use BigQuery ML, which can work on top of BigQuery. So this is the data warehouse architecture on Google Cloud Platform. Thank you.